Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another Lord of the Rings painting tutorial. I told you guys that I would help you get the entire new Osciliath box painted and I am following through on that promise. So, so far in the series we have how to paint the Osciliath scenery and all of the good heroes that were in that box set, which were basically the three ranger heroes. Now, one thing I'm not going to do a video on is the individual unit of rangers in the box set as I believe we cover everything we need to know in the hero section. Having said that, we do have the 12 Gondorian soldiers in their silver armor and black cloth that we're going to be working on in today's video. When we have that finished, that is the good side of the box set finished and complete. And it's time to move over to the bad side where I will do a video on Gothmog, on his warg. I will do one on the trolls and I will do one on the orcs. So stick around for those videos in the future and enjoy today's video. This is what a standard Gondorian warrior looks like. Heavy plate mail over um, some kind of light cloth skirts and some light cloth on the backs of the legs and the backs of the arms. But other than that, there's a lot of metallics going on. I sprayed the model back and then gave it an all over coat of gray sear spray um, just to make it perfect for a, some contrast work. So after that, we moved over to Black Templar contrast. What we want to do here is hit all of the cloth and leather straps across this entire miniature. This can be tricky to tell on these kind of older Lord of the Rings Games Workshop sculpts. As they're not amazing sculpts, you kind of have to paint in uh, the detail and the shadows yourself. Some bits kind of warp into the next. So just filling them in with black for now is a really good thing to do to create a sense of shadow. That's one of those things where if you can't really tell what the detail is, it's best for it to be black so your, your eye doesn't really focus on it, doesn't pay attention to it when you're looking at the model. I found that on the Games Workshop website, if you look up the Gondorian Soldier box set by itself, there is no 360s of the models. You can't look at the back of the models from the website. If you, however, go to the new Osciliath box set on the website, there are 360 versions of the miniatures that you can turn around and see what's kind of supposed to be black and what's not. After that was applied, we moved over to the Gulliman Flesh Contrast, and we just basically blobbed it into his face. That's all that's showing on these models is basically a tiny bit of their face. So getting in there and getting a nice coat of the Gulliman flesh, um, it takes like one second of one brush stroke. After that, it's time to actually go on to the metallic parts of this model. So I'm going to use Lead Belcher to uh, put in my base coats. As you can see, the camera is slightly not wanting to focus on the model. It likes my hand more for reasons. Um, so I do apologize. It does seem to keep auto-correcting in and out of the miniature. But using that same 360 that I was talking about from the Games Workshop website, you can look at the model, see where all of the plate mail is supposed to be. Like for instance, before I checked the 360, I thought that the the, uh, the kind of gauntleted wrist armor of the model was on the front and the back. Turns out it's not, it's only on the outside and it's kind of the, the black leather on the inside. So even I learned something from the, the 360, even though I've painted these miniatures before, but obviously before I must have made a mistake. So. Continue with the lead belcher base coating all of the metallic parts of this miniature, including the back of his shield and the Gondorian tree. Trying to be careful not to hit any of the black parts that you base coated already. Once that's done, we're gonna move over to Retributor Armor Gold, and this is for a very small portion of the miniature, which is the, the kind of cross guard on the pommel of the sword. Once you have those two bits of gold, that's basically all the base coating finished on this miniature. They are very simple models to paint, very satisfying models to paint. Which is a good thing because like, I wish more people would take up and play this game system because I thoroughly believe it is the best game system that Games Workshop has ever produced. And I hope to bring it to my channel in a gaming format sooner rather than later and show you guys just how awesome it really is. Next, it's time to shade the miniature and we went for an all over shade of Null Oil. Uh, top to toe, sword, shield, the whole shabam, everything Nolan oil. This will darken it down nicely and give us a really nice place to work up for with our highlights. And while it's drying, I'm going to throw some of the AK Interactive's wet mud onto the base just to get a bit of ground texture. It will help with the the kind of visual of the model when you're looking at it if you're just to see a white base and then silver armor on top of it it's not going to give you a kind of the, the correct representation of what the model is going to look like so i always find at this point adding some texture will really change how your brain perceives the model and you can really see where the model is going to go 
Okay, time to layer up the miniature after the shade has dried. And we are going to start with the silver. So we're going to go with Iron Breaker here, and we're going to quickly layer up all of the armor panels on this model. Now, we're not trying to get full coverage or anything like that. We want to leave all those dark recesses, just that dark recess. They're supposed to be where the shadows settle. So as I can see, I'm going along the raised parts of the armor plate. Just going for the highest points and giving them a nice quick highlight. Doing it this way will give you a really nice result. And it will make like it look like that kind of beaten armor look. Like if you look at a suit of plate mail up close, it is not a mirror sheen piece of metal by any means. It is worn and it is tarnished. And that's kind of what we want to go for with these models. We'll take our time going around that shield. I'm sorry I haven't shown you much of the shield. I haven't realized and that I didn't record much of it, but obviously you're going to layer up the Gondorian tree on the shield as well. You want to take your time doing that so you do not hit the, the black parts. As you can see the bit there between his left arm and his hip, I'm going to leave it nice and dark. All that black uh, contrast paint is going to get left in there to give you the idea of shadow. After that, we are going to go on to Corvus Black and we're going to layer up all the black parts of the model. So all the cloth and the uh, painted part of the shield. This is something you don't need full coverage of. You're not trying to get in between every leaf and stuff like that. It's just the kind of more raised parts of the shield. We're going to hit with the black. If I genuinely thought that the uh, videos of Lord of the Rings would get enough traction, I would do so many more of them for the channel. I could even see myself in the future being the main focus of my channel being the Lord of the Rings game because I love it so much. Unfortunately, there just isn't the love out there um, to have that as a big part of the content right now. You guys can change that. Follow along. Make sure you subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you would like more Lord of the Rings content, share the video, all those kind of things will help massively. And then very carefully, the black straps going around his breastplate. This is obviously a bit where we do not want to hit the silver as the silver is already highlighted up. After that, we're going to move over to Cadian Flesh Tone. And just with it, I got my extra small artificer layer brush and I just highlighted up kind of his chin, his lips, the little bits of cheek that you can see and his eyelid, that's it. The rest of it can stay nice and dark. And once again, this is not Boromir, Captain of the White Tower. This is a standard Gondorian soldier. You will have, you know, 12, 24, 36 of these miniatures on a table in a game. So you don't need to go crazy. This is the result. This is what I'm going to leave it to there. This is the stage I'm going to leave this miniature at, and I am very happy with the result. I hope you guys are as well. Okay, guys, and there we have it. A very easy, uh, quick to achieve Gondorian soldier, meaning that you can knock out those 12 models from that box set in any evening. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, make sure you give it a like. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. If you have any suggestions on other Lord of the Rings models you would like to see me do a video on, I'd be more than happy to hear those as well. If you like what I do and want to support me even further, the two best ways that you can do that is one, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It really does make a huge difference. And two, check out my Patreon below. There's a couple of extra rewards in there for you as of January, including a private uh, video every single week just for my Patreon followers. So that means that in a year, you will get 52 extra videos that will not go out to the public. They will only be for Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.